All right, guys, welcome back to the Recovery Labs. Coach Mike, uh, we're here with Adam. So Adam's had a history of some shoulder and elbow pain kind of intermittently throughout, you know, the last few seasons. Um, you know, he's here really working on reconditioning himself this offseason um, and getting himself right, you know, to make a run at a possible draft. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, kind of continue along the, the same path of, of arm care that we've been doing. I'm going to start with some, you know, pec release and some subscap release for him. And then we're going to work down into his elbow and his biceps. So. All right. So the first step here, we're going to just do some ART, some active release therapy right through his chest, his pec wall. So most of my pitchers, most of my athletes could probably use some postural correction. So we're just going to work through this pec and uh, give him a little bit of extra love over here. So, you know, in addition to just moving him in, that horizontal abduction, like I said, what I will also like to do is go into external rotation, right? So some of these fibers, or a lot of these fibers in the pec major do help internally rotate the shoulder. So we're gonna, we're gonna work into external rotation as well. You know, he's definitely tight through here, a little bit tender. I'm not trying to crush him, but you can see by his face, he's not totally thrilled with this. Nice, right in there. So he's really tender and tight right here through his sub his subclavius and through that pec minor insertion, really right in that notch of his shoulder where that coracoid is. Um, it tends to be a hot area for him and for a lot of other guys. It's a it's an area I like to call points of convergence, right? Lots of anatomical structures sharing a similar attachment point, and you can definitely have some havoc wreak through there, right? So. You have some pec minor attachment, subclavius attachment, the long head of your biceps. So you've got a lot of stuff hanging out in that part of your shoulder. All right, so that's pretty good for pec, right? So I'm going to start to work on his bicep now. What I like to do is just kind of work through everything a little bit with my hands first. Uh, and then I kind of follow everything up with the grass and just, a, you know, a little bit more superficial um, tissue work and it also is a great way to bring blood flow to the table you know towards the end of the treat again so. this is really just to improve tissue quality so I just like to work through a little bit of everything with him especially since he's not having any glaring issues right now so as I'm extending that elbow I'm just gently gliding my hands over that bicep right towards his bicep tendon so this might be one of my favorite uh, shoulder techniques um, guys that have painful impingement or poor scapular mobility this is one of my go-to's is uh, some subscap release again a lot of these pitchers will tend to have or many of them have poor separation between their scapula thoracic movement and their glenohumeral movement so that terry's major um, is usually a hot spot that lat insertion is usually a hot spot but this subscap i find can is can also kind of be thrown in with those two as well. And since I'm in this area, it's really easy to kind of get in here and work. So what I'm gonna to do to start is just some really gentle Terry's major work. All right, so we're gonna get up, up in here. Just kind of a little bit more of the lateral fibers here. So I'm just gonna kind of tack him in. And then work my way down right to that that distal point of his shoulder blade. So again, you know, right now I'm kind of working on his lat, I'm kind of working on his teres. Obviously these structures are sharing a similar area. So again, just kind of gliding through and bringing him into flexion overhead. You know, again, you don't, I'm not going crazy deep. I'm just kind of applying that pressure and gliding him through. So for guys who have a hard time achieving, you know, overhead positioning, definitely check your terries, definitely check this separation here. That could be an issue for you. Okay, awesome. So for subscap release, I like to try to set my table up so that my knee is supporting his whole elbow and I can just gently externally rotate him with very, very little resistance. Um, you can do this as an active technique too and have them actually work into external rotation as you do this subscap release. But again, I like to kind of just do it myself. I'll, I'll range him and then maybe we'll do a few more of the active types. So, so what I'm gonna do here is just kind of, really what you want to imagine is kind of putting the, you know, the, the nail side or the top side of your fingers on the rib cage and just following that rib cage down into that space between the shoulder blade and the rib cage, okay? So you can see 
you know access wise it's not the easiest thing to do um any any practitioners out there i would caution use you know tell you to use caution through this area your brachial plexus does run right through here so you know again communication with your client is key um, if they start to feel any numbness tingling burning into their hands generally that means you're over that brachial plexus and you want to kind of move off that area you know, I try to use the example of just like, again, am I, am I trying to really create length in his subscap? No, that's not exactly what, that's not what I'm trying to do at all. What I'm trying to do is just create more of like smooth gliding surfaces so that this shoulder blade can rotate on his rib cage. Um, you know, so by creating a little bit of separation in this sheet, you can definitely go a long way for a pitcher who might be struggling with maintaining that overhead position. So really what we're trying to do here is just kind of take the parking brakes off. You know, guys that try to pitch through the, you know, this kind of shoulder mobility issue, you know, generally will have some elbow, hot elbow or, or some shoulder problems as well. So now I'll even put him, you know, further over his head. You can see he's, you know, relaxed in this position. Um, and then I can get two hands on it. And again, moderate pressure. I'm not trying to crush him through here. And when I find that nasty trigger point, I'll just kind of hold some mild to moderate pressure on it. Definitely a go-to technique, though, for any kind of painful impingement type sy syndromes in the shoulder. You know, I'll have a lot of times guys will report they feel, you know, when I'm working in their subscap, they'll feel it kind of where that impingement happens. Um, and I always like to tell them, listen, you know, pain site, pain source, you know, so definitely. All right, cool. So we're going to finish this up with just a little bit of elbow work. Same thing, just kind of resting his, resting his arm in my lap. How's that, Adam? Not too bad, right? So I'm actually extending his wrist as I do this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but as I work proximally towards his elbow, towards that, that medial epicondyle, I'm actually extending that wrist slightly, a little bit as I go. You know, most, most pitchers will have really, really dense tissue through this flexor and pronator and this biggest thing for them is to keep these tissues healthy you know keep this musculature healthy it is the primary stabilizer for your elbow you know as soon as this musculature fails that's when this ligament gets exposed and that's why we're seeing a lot of these tommy john injuries happening more and more um guys are playing at a younger age they're specializing at a younger age they have a lot more mileage on their arms by the time they get to the bigs you know it's not you know a one-sided problem it's a kind of a culture thing um you know but again you know his ability to to get drafted you know hinges upon his ability to throw gas so um, i'm here to try to help him do that as safely and as effectively as possible so i, I do believe that tissue work is part of the solution having access for these younger guys and that's what i'm trying to do here in recovery lab is is give these guys access you know he's a division one player so he's had tissue work in the past but if you ask him through bulk of his high school career in his middle school career he probably never had any type of tissue work done ever before in his life so i'm just trying to give them as much access to proactive prevention work as possible fortunately for us adam is falling into that category of prevention right now so so right now i'm just working on that pronator right i'm supinating his wrist i'm actually pressing down with my front finger on his radius so that i can really get that good supinated position and his pronator is actually pretty locked up right here. So I just did that in a little bit of elbow flexion. Now I'm just going to straighten him all the way out, kind of work on it while his elbow is fully extended. You know, even for a big guy, you can see, you can see that slight valgus deformity that he's got going on, and that's just repetitive stress. That's an adaptation his body has made to throwing over years and years and years. You know, not that it's a, a crazy red flag, but that's what'll happen, you know, over time with all that repetitive stress of throwing. All right, cool. So now we're just gonna get into some really light Graston work. 
to finish this up and then I'll get him sitting on up and we'll, we'll work on his rotator cuff from the back side too. So for this I like to use cocoa butter, uh, just a personal preference. There's plenty of emollients you can use, be beeswax, use Vaseline for this. You can use really any type of oil-based lubricant. I like the cocoa butter because it's cheap, it's easy to get, and it smells good. So never had anybody complain about cocoa butter. Grab this, grab this one, and grab this one. So we're going to start with the uh, GT4, the scanning tool, wrist in a flex position, elbow relatively extended. You know, I'm not pushing crazy hard. You know, this is not, I'm not trying to like rake him and create bruising. I see a lot of that online. I see a lot of that on social media. Guys just like, cr you know, crushing their patients um, with the grass and instruments or the metal instruments in general. I feel like that's a lot to do due to, um, you know, poor education or poor training. You do not need to do that. You don't need to bruise your clients. You, they don't need to be in pain. You can see Adam's face is very relaxed right now. This is not bothering him. In fact, my fingers probably hurt a little worse than this does. Um, again, mild pressure. Yes, you can see some redness, but he's not bruising. You know, you don't want to set your patients off. A, you know, any kind of massage work, you want to really activate their parasympathetic nervous system, right? That relaxation mode so the tissues can recover. You know, if you're really hammering down on people, all you're going to do is set off their adrenaline response. You're going to set off their fight or flight, and their body is not going to ever achieve that recovery mode, right? So all I'm trying to do now is, is create blood flow, bring blood flow to the table. You know, that little bit of redness is fine, okay? But again, mild, mild pressure. You know, we're even seeing newer research or newer proposed theories that, you know, this soft tissue work really isn't actually lengthening the tissue at all. All it's doing is stimulating the nervous system to allow for more length. I've always kind of had the, the mindset with the instrument assisted stuff that m less is more. You know what I mean? I, I've always gotten good results with this without, you know, killing my clients. You know, I understand there are some people out there who think, you know, more is better and deeper is better and, you know, no pain, no gain. But... I can tell you from personal experience that that is not the case. Um, I get great results even with light pressure, and I think more and more clinicians out there are starting to recognize that, you know, sending your patients out onto the street bruised up and uncomfortable and beat up is not cool, um, and it's not really that effective. So I definitely want to see some more research on the the ends of the spectrum of you know activating more of like our, our muscle spindle fibers and and different receptors in the tissue but again you can see you know i brought, brought some redness to the table but he is not bruised he is not bruised okay and by the time i finish working on his pec and his lat and the rest of his shoulder this will have gone back to normal color but it is warm to the touch and that's what i'm looking for i'm looking to bring some heat to this area you know even take this little GT, the smaller one, and now all I'm doing is strumming right over his UCL, okay? That, you know, consistent grassing technique or instrument assisted, just light pressure like this can stimulate the production of more, you know, type one collagen fibers that are just more, that are just stronger, right? So type three, which are the brittle ones um, that, that can break easily, the collagen that's found in scar tissue, that's what we're trying to eliminate and transform any scar tissue that might be in this area and give it a little bit more tensile strength. So I'll do this in two directions. I went with the grain and obviously now I'm working against the grain. Again, this is a light structure. I'm holding this like a pencil so obviously I can't generate a ton of force but I'm right over his UCL right here and the insertion really for his flexor pronator bundle. Again, externally rotated position, right parallel to the ground, comfortable for him, and now I'm just going to work through that pack. You know, I'm almost just letting the weight of the tool do the work. Just like the principles of working with any tool, really. You know, you don't want to take a saw and force it. You know, if you're forcing a tool, that's how people get hurt and that's how you get bad results. But if you just let the tool do the work, you're much better off. So I subscribe to the same school of thought when it comes to my, my instrument assisted soft tissue work. You know, less is more, better is better. It doesn't necessarily have to be painful to be effective. 
and I'll even bring him up overhead again again now I got some of these more of these inferior fiber bundles on a little bit more stretch and again I'm just letting that instrument do the work and from here I can then work right again right into his his lat and his teres so I'll butter him up a little bit more here and this is a sensitive area, so I'm actually going to switch gears a little bit with what instrument I'm going to use. I'm going to use this con concave one, just because it gives me a little bit better contact and it's a little bit more comfortable kind of through this armpit area. You know, this axillary area is super, super sensitive. I think it's a critical point to hit for baseball players in general, but you just want to be cognizant of how much pressure you're using through here. You know, he's got some stretch marks. You can see they're getting a little bit red. That's just because he's, you know, huge. Obviously, I'm limited to what I can kind of hit from this position. So I'm just going to hit, hit what I can. You know, same thing, kind of in that subscat now. A little grainy through here. And I definitely like to bring some blood flow to the serratus as well. All right, so again, this matches very, very well. And I can kind of work into that, right into that uh, subscapular space and kind of strum right over that serratus as well. All right, now, go ahead and sit up face that way for me, okay, bud? So you're left a tiny bit. Okay, so put this hand on your shoulder. Okay, so again, I'm putting him in this kind of almost like this impingement position, right? He's internally rotated and flexed. But the advantage to this is it does expose, it brings his shoulder blade into the upward rotation, so it exposes this middle trap. It exposes, you know, his rhomboids on a little bit of length. And obviously I'm gonna get the ability to work on some of his uh, rotator cuff here as well. So, you know, for the purposes of what I'm doing right now, I am not trying to create length at all um, in his rotator cuff. You know, that's not, we're not looking for more mobility in his shoulder. His shoulder's plenty mobile. You know, he's a throwing athlete, so, you know, we don't want this thing to be loose. However, again, this is going back to, you know, the why. Why are we doing this? It's tissue quality. You know, the, the better his tissue quality is, the more resilient he's going to be to injuries in the future, okay? So, you know, if you, if you look at your set principle, specific adaptations to impose demands, you know, just like we look at in the weight room, it's the same principle. You know, I'm looking, I'm putting a demand on his system, on his soft tissues, and at a cellular level, his body is going to begin to respond to this. Okay. So again, working through that lateral aspect of his shoulder. So right now what I'm doing is following his scapular spine down and really just concentrating on his infraspinatus and his teres minor and major. Okay, from this position, you can really, really access them well. Right, redness, no bruising, okay? Now from this spot, same position, I can work some of these, this middle and lower trap and his rhomboids. Again, now for the purpose of creating length, right? I actually wanna lengthen the front. I just wanna kinda of just create some blood flow around here. I'm straight up overhead now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna raise that arm straight up over your head and just bend your elbow so that it's over your head just like that. Okay, so like it's almost like a tricep stretch now. Again, I'm gonna kind of hit that Terry's a little bit more now that it's in a lengthened position. And it's also nicely exposing his subscap. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that from the front. Okay, so from here, again, I can hit that serratus, that Terry's and really just kind of tie all this into his lat, right? And working down his lat in this lengthened position, right? So I'm really hitting more of these superficial fibers, and then I can really kind of get into his subscap here, which is real gritty and nasty. It feels like someone dumped gravel in there, that's gross. But again, we're trying to relieve some of these adhesions and restrictions in the tissue just to give him better scapulothoracic movement, okay? That takes a lot of stress off the sclerohumeral joint, where we're going to see a lot of injuries in baseball.
you know, so you athletic trainers out there, physical therapists, uh, whatever practitioner you may be, you can just relax. We're, we're all set, bud, okay? You know, so we're looking to, you know, help prevent some of these baseball injuries. 20 minutes, 30 minutes is all it really takes once a week to get really great results. I just want to say thank you, Adam, for uh, being a good model, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.